Welcome to Channels Book Club. I am Olakunle Kasumo. There was a time when, as a little boy, I actually wanted to become a boxer. But don't take that too seriously. Before I knew it, I also wanted to become a wrestler, then a footballer, then a pilot, a doctor, and almost every other profession that caught my attention. I'm sure I was not the only child who had such strange combination of dreams. But I did become a big Muhammad Ali fan and used to play act as a boxer. You can see that it would have been a big mistake if I had told that path. I clearly lacked the talent for it. I bought this pair of gloves somewhere at Surulere, Lagos after re-watching some old Muhammad Ali fights that rekindled my, well, boxing dream. The legendary boxer died on the 3rd of June and was buried on Friday, June 10th, 2016. Ali was much more than a great boxer. He was perhaps the greatest promoter of boxing and a civil rights champion. To remember him, let's start today's show by introducing to you five great books written on Muhammad Ali. The Muhammad Ali many people don't know emerges in this book through the words of more than 200 of Ali's family members, opponents, friends, world leaders and others who have known him best. With brilliant unprecedented candor, best-selling author Thomas Hauser recreates extraordinary Muhammad Ali in this page turner. The Fight by Norman Mailer There are many who consider this to be the single greatest book ever written on any sport. It covers perhaps the most important fight in Ali's career, the bout against George Foreman in Zaire in 1974. Mailer had complete access to Ali, Foreman, their trainers and followers, and a Rome Zaire, picking up vibes of the bout. The result is part spot books, part fight report, part travelogue, and part biography. Ali vs Superman by Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams this is a comic strip that captures the sheer stature of Ali and it remains one of the most famous Superman comics of all time. Two legendary figures meet for the first time in this spectacular adventure and Ali held his own. The two heroes then team up to battle a common enemy. The Greatest My Own Story by Muhammad Ali This autobiography of Ali is essential reading for anyone who wants to get into the head of the legend, as it is the closest thing we have of his story in his own words. The tempered conversation he had while driving in a car with Joe Frazier, the man who would become his arch rival, is worth the price of the book. Muhammad Ali, a story about a superman, written by Superfan, by Chuka Moma. This book explores the life of Muhammad Ali from the perspective of a lifelong African fan and journalist who covered Ali's stories for many decades. From some of Ali's most epic fights to his incredible gift of oratory and poetry, the brilliant MoMA takes the reader into the life of the greatest in a unique way. Gloves removed. A few years ago on this show, I had an exclusive interview with Chukamoma, a veteran sports journalist and author of a book titled Muhammad Ali, a story about a superman written by a superfan. We reviewed the book and discussed the boxing icon from the perspective of Moma, who met the icon and wrote about him for several years. There is no better time to replay clips from that interview than now. Please enjoy it. What was the experience of writing about Ali like for you? And um, I read from the first chapter how you met Ali himself with the manuscript and how he said, you don't look as dumb as you look. <laughs> you don't sound as dumb as you look. <laughs> okay. So tell us about that, the experience well, of putting this book together. Well, you know, uh, again, going back to Government College of Adam, when Ali fought Sonny Liston the first time, uh, before or something, the camp were broken into two. People like me were for Sonny Liston. He was strong, he did not have, like better seen twice. Then there were those who were for then Cassius Clay, who became Muhammad Ali. And uh, I had a bet with a, 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 a one year my senior, who were in the same house, Swanston House. 
we had a bet with my favorite meal, which was the fried plantain. <laughs> Two plates of it. And I was shocked that uh, Sonny uh, Cassius Clay beat uh, Sonny Liston. So I lost two plates of uh, Dodo. And it was uh, interminably painful. But I kept wanting him to get beaten. He kept winning. And then as time went on, you began to see that the man was actually such a great man, with a large heart, such a kind man. Uh, he was a superior person, not just athlete. In his philosophies of life, in the background, almost everything he did, up to the Vietnam War, which he refused to go to because he said, I ain't got no quarrel against them Viet Cong. No Viet Cong ever called me a nigger. <laughs> and he told, told them pointedly, uh, you want me to go across the world and uh, fight uh, yellow people, the disadvantaged people in the world, when his own kid and kin in America were not free. So he's your enemy, not mine. Mm -hmm. For which he gave up the title and endured a lot of deprivation which I still believe is responsible for his present condition. Mm. Because had it not been for the layoff, 67, till he came back in 70, mm. before his layoff he was untouchable. You couldn't touch him, he was too fast. Both of hands and of feet. Uh, Cause the matter said the only time he could uh, touch Ali was when he shook hands at the end of the fight. <laughs> That's uh, the former trainer of, uh, the late trainer of uh, Mike Tyson. <laughs> but when he came back, because they took away his title, he was now slower, I kept taking punches he wouldn't have uh, had to take before uh, his ban from boxing. Well, it's neither here nor there, uh, but it's clear to my mind that the punches he took after that uh, were responsible for the Parkinson's syndrome and all that. So it was just one thing leading to the other, and uh, you found that he was such a fine, great man, and that became a a fan. So you took the manuscript to him? Uh, yes, yes, I, I read the manuscript. Uh, <laughs> well, he, he was, uh, when I did meet the great man, nice man, and uh, uh, I was introduced to him by his age. Uh, this person came, he says he's written a book about it. Okay, okay. Let's sit down. Uh, let's hear what you've written. <laughs> Invite to use his voice, say, show me what you've got. <laughs> so I started reading and reading. Then after a while, I read after one very flattering paragraph about him. He stopped me, he projected, he told me, he said, this man is on my payroll. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, there was a lot of laughter. Then, uh, I read another uh, paragraph along the line. He stopped me again, he said, tell me something, man. I like what you've written. You're not as dumb as you look. <laughs> I was a little confused. Then I continued reading, and then I got to one section. He liked what I wrote, so he said, "Look, you you almost look you look a little bit like me, except that you are too sharp." You know, <laughs> I wouldn't be deterred. I continued reading. Then I talked about his fight with Joe Frazier, and I talked about. Uh, I, I remember my words. I said, uh, "The chap Ali was always vulnerable to shorter fighters." with great mm, left hooks. Yes. I said Sonny Banks knocked him down with the left hook uh, before he won the title, but he got up and knocked out Sonny Banks. Mm -hmm. And then I continue, I said Joe Frazier uh, knocked him down also with a potent left hook. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I said he continued, his, Joe Frazier's left hooks continued to do a number on at least job all night long. He stopped me. He said, you don't even look like me. You are ugly just like Joe Frazier. You are shot and <laughs> Well, you know, he said it in good spirit, yeah. and we all laughed about it. So it was quite, uh, it was one of the more pleasant experiences uh, of my of my career. And I've met many great champions in my career as a reporter, as a columnist. I've met, talked to people like Martina Navratilova, Ivan Lendil, with Sampras, with the Federer, uh, quite a lot. And a lot of great champions in different sports. But there were two that always stuck out in my mind, Muhammad Ali and that great uh, American icon, African-American icon, Atawash.